Welcome back to learnpiezo.org. And today we're going to continue with um, understanding piezoelectric material properties. Last time we understood the piezoelectric D constant or piezoelectric charge constant. And basically what that tells us is how electric field can be applied to the material and we get strain uh, and that's called the actuator equation or how we can get you know dielectric you know, displacement using the through stress which is a capital X so we call that the sensor equation and actually uh, these is, this is a very simplified form of these equations in reality um, you know, if we go back to all materials, real materials, you know, the lecture two topics, we have stress, we have strain, and which is equal to the elastic compliance multiplied by the stress. And this is the case for any material. In the same way, we have dielectric displacement for dielectric materials. It's related by the permittivity multiplied by the electric field. And these are just basic uh, material property relationships that are, occur for any material, namely uncoupled materials. But we know due to the piezoelectricity, electricity we have coupling. Therefore, in addition to this deformation of the material due to strain, I mean due to stress, we also have a deformation due to piezoelectricity through the D constant. And similarly, uh, just as we apply uh, induce a charge through applying an electric field, we also induce and, uh, and we also induce charge through putting force on the material. So therefore, we have these electric, you know, we have these uh, piezoelectric components, and I'll just call these the normal, normal components. And they're still known as the actuator and the sensor equations. Uh, but, you know, put it in this actual form, uh, we call these the constitutive equation spelled like this constitutive equation and they come in many forms because we know we can uh, substitute for example how can we solve if you solve this equation for stress we end up with a different equation we put this uh, you know on the other side and therefore we end up with the strain strain minus de equals sx and then we can just divide out this s so x over s minus d e over s equals strain stress so we kind of end up with a different form of the equations basically you might see different symbols for example d over s uh, is sometimes uh, written as a different symbol i believe it's lowercase e you know so basically there's some uh, assumptions you know some rearrangement of the equations but essentially they all come from this uh, constitutive equation which defines P as electricity along with the regular normal uh, function of the material. The next aspect of piezoelectric materials properties I want to speak about is the piezoelectric coupling coefficient or the electromechanical coupling coefficient. And this is denoted by K squared. And the squared, why that's there, will be uh, understood uh, in a moment. But basically the coupling electromechanical coupling coefficient uh, in general terms, you know, it's the input energy, you know, which is uh, divided by the uh, output energy, you could say, or actually the stored energy, sorry, stored energy. So what do we mean by this? Meaning that we input electrical energy by applying electric field. And then we get out mechanical energy, such as strain. So how much energy is stored in electrical energy and how much energy is stored in strain energy? So if we recall, when we are applying an electric field on a material, on a piezoelectric material, we get strain, but we also get charge because this is a dielectric material. Uh, do you remember this equation? And then we had that extra piezoelectric part attached to it. Uh, which was D capital X. Well, we're not applying any stresses on the material, so forget about that portion. So we still have this 
uh, you know, applied electric field causing some charge, and obviously that charge, since this is a capacitor, it's going to store some energy. And that's the input energy of the material. The, uh, the stored energy is what we're going to refer to as the uh, strain, or the mechanical energy. So we're inputting electrical, getting mechanical. This is how you know, input electrical, getting mechanical. That's how you know which one goes on top and bottom. But let me show you how we can express this k squared term in terms of simple material uh, constants. So we have the uh, stored electrical energy, which is Ue equals 1 half Cv squared. And we're going to go a little quickly here. I'm sure you see where all this is coming from because we covered earlier. If you don't understand what, how do you define the capacitance uh, or other terms, uh, then please go there and check that material out. So obviously this cancels with that and we're left with 1t and e squared. So this is the electrical energy. And the mechanical energy in the material uh, is 1 half capital K, which we're going to capital K the spring constant, times this change in the length. We have, you know, the change in length, which is going to signify the, you know, the force. And this is this is like a normal spring uh, potential energy equation. So basically, uh, for real materials, the spring constant is A over L S. L is the length of the material, the length of uh, stretching. And then we have this displacement here, L, which then equals one half A. And then this this term here and this term here, it becomes a str uh, strain. So we're left with this equation, and this equals the mechanical energy. So let's just write that at the top. So electrical energy is one half e a t e squared, and mechanical energy is one half a over s x and this should, I shouldn't this should, this should have been squared here yep this should have been squared so if that was squared uh, then we'll be left with uh, L over here oh. <laughs> okay if this should if this should have been squared uh, we still have a few minutes uh, so this should have been squared so basically what we're going to end up with is equals 1 half, uh, because we need an extra L, we're going to multiply by L over L, and therefore we'll, we'll use these terms to make the strain squared, and we'll end up with A L 1 half A L over S. This is what it'll end up being. So there you go. Those are the uh, expressions. Now, now, obviously, uh, the strain in this case is considered by. Um, we'll see. So we got the store input energy on the bottom. So we have one half. And on the top, we have the store energy, the electrical energy. We notice a lot of things are cancelled out immediately. Well, wait, let's not call that strain squared. Instead of strain, we'll use DE because that's how we apply the strain. So DE squared. Notice a lot of things cancel out. And we're left with, I remember this is K squared because we're using this, this definition. And what we're going to be left with now is k squared equals d squared over epsilon t k squared over d squared equals over epsilon times s. 
And if you assume the thickness is the same as the length, in this case, so if you assume like this is like the length, and the length is also equal to the thickness, because let's say we're applying the electric field across the thickness, and then this is the equation for the coupling. So this is a very simple relationship between the piezoelectric D constant, the permittivity, and the uh, elastic compliance. And I'll be explaining a little bit more about these materials with regards to boundary conditions, uh, which is very important in the coming video. Thanks for listening.